God is so good, isn't He? Yes, He is. Father, we just thank You, Lord. Yes. As we transition now, Father, from worshiping You, giving unto You. Yes. But now, Father, we want to open up our hearts to receive from You. Yes. And Holy Spirit, we ask You to reveal the Word today yes. for us. We need Your Word, God. It is life to us. Say that You're a lamp into our feet and a light into our path, God, that You give us the direction. You give us the wisdom and the know-how and the knowledge yes. to go forth and to do what you created us to do. Yes. We need that today more than ever, Father. Yes, Lord. So I pray that today that our ears and eyes be open to see and hear your word. Amanda and I, that we know that you have anointed us to declare your word. God, we don't take that lightly. We'll do it with boldness, yes. power, and authority, but most importantly, rooted and grounded in love. Yes. And today, the seed of your word as it comes forth, Father, that it will be planted deep into our hearts where the birds can't steal it away. And I declare it shall produce fruit in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, again, thank you for being here. And we have been just praying for all those who have texted, who have called, and said that they are fighting in their body. We we call you healed and whole in the name of Jesus. And we do miss you and can't wait to see you again. So in our series, uh, we have really just... Over the past week, we have been talking um, uh, about what just being able to remain, Yes. right? Remain in his presence, remain in this walk. And I think I called it last week, uh, maintain to remain. Yes. And so this week, I just want to do part two of that because I want to expound a little bit, continue on, rehearse a little bit more because I believe it's that important to us. The maintenance of our relationship is vital and important. That's what we're going to kind of do today. But from the beginning, we have seen that humanity has had a trust and a faith issue. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? Yes. That from the beginning, when we saw in the garden, one of the first things that the serpent came was planted seeds of doubt. And those seeds of doubt, instead of rebuking them, Mm -hmm. they fed on them, watered them with, I believe, thoughts, didn't cast down vain imaginations against their knowledge of God, and allowed those thoughts to produce in their life roots that when the time came, they didn't deny their flesh. Yeah. It seems like uh, we tend, as humanity, to side on these type of questions. First thing we tend to side on is, is asking the question, is there something being withheld from me? Mm. Ooh. Is there something I'm not getting? Is something I'm owed, something being withheld that I don't know about? And the second way, and the second question is, is God hiding something? Hmm. And, I, and I've heard it preached, and I've heard it preached before about the hidden things of God. And I understand that there are things that we go and we seek after him, right? right, right. But God is not hiding, but oftentimes we are blinded by our own flesh. It's clear throughout the Bible, and I've proved it to you, that it is his desire to be seen and known completely. That's right. But my question is, are we willing to do what it takes to see and know God clearly? Because we cannot see God in the flesh. We see him spirit to spirit. We see the things and revealed by the spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so important to understand is, is God doesn't want to withhold anything from his sons and daughters, but he is, his desire as a father is for them to have the full inheritance that he had created them for. That's even why he gave a of himself, he gave Christ. Right, and he even talks about, and I believe it's in Matthew where he talks about, would God not even give his sons who are evil something that is good? Yeah. Right? It does say that. Yeah. And so it's not about how <laughs> we are, because we can never be good enough. You know, and that's what Jesus has said. What are you calling good? What is your definition of good when you say, I'm a good teacher? No, it's it's not that. I can never be good enough. And and that was the thing what you know <clears throat> Eve was at is have I got everything that God has available to me? Yeah. And that's the thing. We do. It's us who's limiting it, not God. That's not right. God at all. There's nothing hidden. It says the the word is hidden, and the meaning of the word is hidden for those who are spiritually dead. Not if you're spiritually alive. Not if you're alive in Christ. That's right. So, I mean, every promise, every word, everything that is in it, you should have the understanding for. And if you don't, you just have to ask. That's it. You seek. You seek him. 
Right. And I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about what happens in the seeking. Yes. Because seeking is not just asking. There are things in a seeking that we have to be willing. Seeking means that I'm willing to do whatever it takes to seek. Yes. So, and when I'm seeking out and looking for something, sometimes there are things in the way that block my vision. Yes. And see, that's what mountains are. Yes. They're vision blockers. Yes. And we have been given the authority to rebuke mountains. Yes. The things that are blocking the vision from the sight to see God in his fullness. And when we have to command them. Right. Cast them into the sea, right? Mm -hmm. We, you and I, have that authority through Christ Jesus. But oftentimes, we fall in love with the mountain. Mm. Some of us are still liking the mountain views. Mm. And it's stopping us from seeing the true beauty that God has for us. Right. So our lack of faith has led us to a cycle of poor choices. And I'm talking about humanity. So the lack of faith in humanity has led to a cycle of poor choices with the attempt to quote-unquote help God with his problems. Mm. Remember I talked a little <laughs> bit about God's problems last mm. week, right? Mm. Number one is God doesn't have problems. That's right. God is the solution to problems. He yes. is the answer to problems. He yes. is not the problem. That's right. So when problems arise, it's not God. So we can't point our finger at God as the problem. We have to follow and seek God for the solution that's in him to our problem. Yes. We're not helping God with problems. We have to surrender to God for the answer so that we can solve problems. He's empowered you and I through Jesus Christ to solve the problem. Yes. Right? Number two is just because we have good intentions to help God doesn't mean that they're always aligned with God's heart. Mm. Good intentions don't necessarily mean they're aligned with God's heart. Good intentions without confirmation of the Holy Spirit will lead to disaster. Right. You can have good intentions, but without consulting the Holy Spirit, disaster can come, even though you meant well. Yeah. But meaning well in the flesh doesn't mean it aligns with the spiritual things of God. Because we can think we're doing something good in the flesh, Yes. We're but it doesn't mean that it's pleasing in the sight of God. Right. Right? So when faith in God's words decline, when the faith in God's word declines, the trust in our own abilities will increase and rise. Mm. I put that this, this morning on Facebook, and some people were getting it. Right. I read it, and I was like, some people are going to maybe not understand what that <laughs> means. What it means is the less that I believe what God has for me, the more I trust in how I can accomplish it on my own. And oftentimes, our fruit of our life shows the lack of faith in God's Word. Yes. We had good intentions. We want the best, and we're trying to help God because really we have a faith problem. Yes. And the question goes back to is, what's being withheld from me? What's God hiding from me? Mm -hmm. Is there more? Is there something I'm not seeing? I'm going to go find it because it's not happening when I want it, how I want it. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, right? And so that's something we battle all the time. It's a constant battle. It's a faith issue. It's a faith issue. When we lose faith in the Word of God, we gain faith in our own abilities. And when we have faith in our own abilities, they will fail. Mm -hmm. They will fail. You could maybe see it have a little bit of traction, but mm -hmm. it's only temporary. That's right. It's only temporary. Doubt will lead to worldly decision-making. Mm. That's a good point. My doubts will lead to worldly decision-making. Even with good intentions, doubt will cause dangerous decisions that will open up our life for disaster. We have to trust the Word of God. And if I don't know the Word of God for my situation, remember, we must seek the Word of God. We have to seek it out because God has the solution yes. for every problem. Yes. Amen. Remember, He's not the problem. He is the solution to every problem. And, and you know, in this day and age, I mean, we have the issue of expenses are high, right? So what are you, what is your solution? More income, right? Well, I look at it this way. When Pastor John and I were coming up and we had lack and we were going through, expenses were high and our income was at a certain level. So what do we look at? How to decrease the expense instead of trying to live for the expense, 
decrease the ex- expense so that I could give. Right. The opposite is how we live. He, you know, in, in, in what the world tells us, the te- world tells us if you want to have this expense, this life of expense, you got to increase your income. That's not God's standard. That's not what God does, is it? What does he say? He says, you sit, put me first. I give the increase. <laughs> so what do you need to do? Decrease it. We decrease so he can increase. That's right. And you're absolutely right. right. So many times we don't examine our life to the point is, what really am I willing to sacrifice to ensure that I can live? Right. And we try to seek more and more and more. And some people are on a journey their whole life Mm -hmm. to get the greater paycheck, to get the more money. And really they live in no more freedom because the more money they're making, the more debt they've created. Right. And so it's a vicious cycle that we live in when it comes to that. And you and I have to realize, too, that there are things spiritually in our life that require us to sacrifice because it's costing us dearly. Yes. And there are things that we have to be willing to say, you know what, it's not worth it. That's right. It's not worth me continuing to feed this because I, I will keep on and on and on and up in the ante. And it's not worth my time, my effort. It's robbing me from a gifting that God has for me, a promise that he has for me. Yes. And I'm willing to get rid of that. As you mature, what you're going to do is you're going to begin to see things in your life that you're willing to say, you know what, I can part with that Mm -hmm. because it really has no meaning. That's right. Right? It has no meaning for my life in Christ. It's not benefiting me. It doesn't add to anything. And when we're in that situation where we were, we had to find things that really had no meaning. Cable. Cable. It it was one of them that really went away. We we didn't have. We didn't have internet. Mm, We didn't require it to work. So the bare necessities to to live that gave uh, a benefit to life. And there are things that we'll have to adjust in our life to say, you know what? They really don't give meaning to my life in Christ. Right. It's not necessarily they're bad things, but they're things that aren't giving meaning. That's taking up things from me to do in the kingdom of God. Right. Right? So it's a different perspective of don't do it, or I'm willing to say, you know what? I'm willing to give this up. This may be permissible. Right. But it's not beneficial to me. Right. Yeah, going out to eat was another one. Yeah, we we ate ramen noodles Mm. for a long time. Yeah. Uh, Ramen noodles and cereal. and So people look at us now and say, you got a nice house, you got vehicles, you got this. I was, we were driving hand-me-downs. Yep. uh, Old big, I mean, town cars, old yes. trucks, <laughs> you know, whatever we could get to ride is that's what right. we were riding with. And right. so we've been there. We understand the struggle that's there. But one thing, we never compromised. We always ensured that, that the things that the bare necessities were there, but we never increased it to where we took away from giving in the kingdom of God. That's it. So we never added on these um, these things in our life that would cost us, that would rob from God. We were willing to give up these things to ensure the kingdom was always financed, that there was always room for blessing, that we honored God with the first fruit. Right. It was not a lot. But really, I'm going to tell you, friend, it's not about the amount. It's not. It's about the intention of our heart. It's your honor. It's your honor to God. Yes. And where we give. And that comes with everything we do. We can have a truth of the word, but if we act on it without honor, it still is no benefit. That's right. That, and then when you said, when the faith in God's word declines, when the honor of God's word declines, the trust in our own ability will rise. Yes. We will put our place in the position that God's supposed to be. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and our flesh will tend to do that. Yes. <clears throat> and that's something we have to battle right. from time to time. And sometimes you're doing it and don't realize you're doing it, but the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you, and then it's your choice. Do I deal with this or to continue on? Right. Who's going to live? Who's going to live at this moment? Right. And that's how we grow. The Holy Spirit will reveal something. You may have been living with it for a while, then he's going to reveal something to you. You'll be like, wow, maybe I, maybe I should sacrifice that. I need to do, do without that. It's right. not that you were just only a heathen, you know, on your way to hell heathen. No, it's something that's not benefiting your walk with God. Right. And, and it's not something that God want, doesn't want you to have. The thing is, he told you to put him first, mm-hmm. and I've got better. Yep. Are you willing to trust him with the better? 
And a lot of times, like I say, friend, it's it's a faith thing. Yes, it is. It's a whole faith thing. It's a it's a faith thing. Trusting God, it's a faith thing. Because I believe that the pickle that we're in today as a church resulted from a faith thing. Yes. Because the doubt within the leadership of the church has allowed dangerous decisions to be made that has altered its integrity and steered it away from maintaining the standards of Christ. Yes. And it's because of doubts in leadership. Because they weren't seeing it fast enough. Yes. They weren't seeing enough fruit of what they thought should happen out of the Word of God. And the main thing was, is visually they didn't see the church numbers like they thought they should. Mm -hmm. And so they doubted the concepts, and so they came up with standards to help God. Remember, the less you believe in or have faith in the Word, the more you're going to have faith in your own abilities and your own ways. Right. And we tend to help God that way. But it's a doubt it's a doubt thing. It's full of, it's full of fear. Yeah. So let's get some Bible verses. Second Peter chapter two. And it's going to be verse number one and two. And if you would, would you read okay. that? But also in those days, those who arose false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among yourselves, who will subtly and stealthily introduce her- heretical um, Doctrine. doctrines, destructive heresies even denying and disowning the master who brought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their immoral ways and lascivi- uh, la- lascivious. <laughs> lascivious doing. <laughs> you picked a translation that had big yeah, words. Yeah. Uh, for That's southern, why I asked you to read it. <laughs> for southern. <laughs> <laughs> lascivious. Lascivious doings. Because of them, the true way will be maligned and defamed. See, I had a problem with maligned, and you did that really well. Yeah. Lascivious. Is, I, see, that's why we're together. <laughs> that's see, right. We help each other. <laughs> I could say Deuteronomy. Yeah, shut up. Yes. All right. <laughs> but let's look at that again. So there, in, in, the, in these times, there's going to be false prophets, right? Yes. And we think of false prophets as someone that's predicting the future. But something that is prophetic is something that's trying to make a declaration that doesn't align with wor- the Word of God. The Word of God is, uh, right? to say the when, false prophet is the Word we, of God. When we speak the Word of God, we're prophesying yes. to our situation, yes. right? So we have to understand that there will be people who will falsely be declaring things that don't align with the, with the character word. and nature right. of God, mm-hmm. okay? And even as we're doing that, there are going to be people who are teaching <clears throat> these things they're proclaiming amongst mm-hmm. you yeah. that will come in and they're going to teach this garbage yes. that doesn't align with the Word of God. It's That's in right. these days. We're talking about church folks here, yes. y'all. Stop thinking everything the Bible's talking about is the world and the sinner. No. It's all, you have to look at the context of who he's writing to. And we are talking about people in the body. We're talking about church people. Yes. And we're talking about people who are coming, who, who do love God, right? Yes, yes. But, but there's something that happens. I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. You can love God and not seek after God in a relationship and avoid your relationship with him and start living off of somebody else's revelation, yes. and you're in dangerous ground. That's right. That's right? right. But here it's saying there will be false prophets, false declarations of the word of God, and there will be teachers of this false prophets and declarations, and they're going to be subtle. They're going to be slowly introduced. Yes. It's not this big way I'm going, oh, my God, heresy. No, it begins to subtly come in. It's like when you put a, a boiling water, right? You right. know, when you boil something like uh, what they talk about lobsters right, or right. anything like that, you gradually turn it up because if you throw it in there, they're going to jump. They're going to jump, right? That's but right. as you gradually turn it up and warm it up, guess what? They're surrounded until eventually they die. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens here. It suddenly comes in, and we never notice the heat that's rising up from hell inside the church that's right. until we're fully consumed with it. So it's subtle teachings that have come in to the body of Christ, mm-hmm. and it says here they're, they're uh, destructive heresies. Yeah. They're heresies within the body of Christ. And I'm not talking about theological beliefs like uh, oneness or trinity mm-hmm. or pre-rapture, post-rapture. Right. These are not the things that it's talking about are heretical. They're things that go against the character and nature of God that allow you mm-hmm. to try to continue to live and say, yet I'm still living for God. It's you and I trying to have a life on ourselves with trust issues, faith issues, doing it our way and not God's way, and then making up a doctrine that says that he agrees with that. Mm. 
It's heretical because the Bible says there will be no other gods. That's right. It, he is a jealous God. So for us to come up with a theological way that we can put something in his place and call it good is heretical. Yes. It's heresy. Yes. But it will slowly come into the body of Christ to where we justify actions and then we put God's approval on it when his character and nature says otherwise. Right. Right? And it says here... Um, it brings themselves to swift destruction, and many will follow their immoral ways. It said how many? Many. Many. Right? Yes. It said many. There will be a huge number of people. Do not think numbers equals success. Don't think numbers equal God's got his stamp of approval on it. Mm, that's right. Just because it's big doesn't mean that it's of God. That's right. Don't think that. Numbers are not what tells you. That's where the church got in trouble, is thinking that it's a numbers game. If I can get more numbers, more people, I've get more people to quote-unquote know Jesus, I've done something great. And they base it on the salvation. How many people I can make say a confession? Notice I use the word make say a confession. Right. If I can trick you to make you say a confession, then I write it down as I've done something, I've made an accomplishment. And that's, it's, it's terrible, but that's what's going on in the body of Christ. So, and they'll, many will follow their immortal ways. Because of them, the true way will be defamed. Yes. Because of them, bless you, because of them, when truth is said, it's going to be like, oh my God, listen to that. It'll be defamed. It's like, there's nothing in that. Why are you talking that way? That's not the way we do church. That's not who God is. That's not love. Mm -hmm. That's not acceptance. That's not this, and they, they're going to spit this stuff out because what they've been taught and what they've laid down as a foundation has been heresy, and now when the truth comes, they are offended, Yeah. right? They throw the judgment word out there. They come, become defensive. Yes, yes. Inside of their belief system. Mm. I believe firmly that the modern church has covered the light of Christ in an attempt to create a church culture that's more appealing to the world. That's what it was. We want to appeal to the world, and we called it, we want to appeal to the seeker. We want people who are seeking truth to come in and feel comfortable that they're seeking truth, not to feel anything crazy. So we don't want, we don't want to be the offense that leads, that leads them away from their seeking trail. First and foremost, you've taken false responsibility. You aren't the one that's drawing them. That's right. Stop trying to be the Holy Spirit. That's right. As the verse stated earlier, subtle and stealthy. It has been camouflaged in many ways, but one of the most common is that God's grace and love has been turned into a false theology of affirmation. Mm -hmm. And look up the word affirmation. It's not accepting. It's condoning. Mm. There's a difference between me accepting you as you are, to come as you are, than condoning who you are. God accepts us, yes. Christ accepts us yes. to come, yes. but he doesn't condone us to stay. That's right. Affirmation is permission to remain in the state that you're in. Mm. And we have taken grace and love and taught a false theology that you can come and remain the state that you're in, and God's okay with it. Mm -hmm. And that's, what, that's where we're leading, and it's, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Remember, darkness is not getting any darker. Right. Okay? But what is happening is, is that we are being more acceptant of yes. darkness. Amen. All right, so let's yeah. move on here. So it's being camouflaged under this false theology of affirmation. It's time that the church today takes the responsibility for its part in dimming the light of Christ. Mm. We've got to come to the responsibility and say we have a part in this. The greatest thing that the church can do is, is, is be repentive. Yes. And repentive means that I have, a, I have an issue and I'm willing to turn away from it for God. Yes. Right? Owning up to its part and re repenting and turning away from that. And the reason that we keep going further into this area is because, one, it's a pride issue. We right. don't want to admit that we were wrong, right? That's full of pride. But when we 
Humility is saying, you know what? I can't do this on my, by myself. I can't do this alone. God, I need you. I have a great need for Christ. So therefore, the heart of repentance, again, I, it's not sin consciousness. It's not repentance. Repentance is, I have a great need for Christ, and I surrender this part to you. You know, And that's what it is. Because I think John the Baptist started it with it. Jesus yeah. talked about it. <clears throat> Repent. Absolutely. The kingdom of God is here. Mm-hmm. Right? I'd rather live in a state of repentance, not feeling sorry for myself or being down on myself. No, it's, God, I have a great need for you. I have a great need for you. I want you to live. So I need to die to myself. Yeah. That's repentance. What's a crazy thought is if Christ were here today proclaiming what he proclaimed then, Ooh. he would be defamed. Yes. It would say it's heretical what he is saying because he is causing judgment on people. He is making it uncomfortable. Jesus wasn't the friendly seeker you thought he was. No. He taught with boldness and authority, but he did it with love. Love doesn't mean that I compromise a standard. Right. He had great it, compassion great for Great compassion, people. but he never affirmed where they were. That's right. Amen. Right. All right. So there, I believe this, though. There's a shift that is happening mm. in the body of Christ. It's been happening, but I believe it's gaining momentum. Okay? A remnant is arising. A resistance is forming that will no longer stay silent and allow the compromised gospel to continue without exposure. We will expose it. We must become that resistance. We must be the light that shines into darkness. You and I are the hands and feet of God. Yes. We have to stand up for truth. Yes. And we have to be willing to say, no matter what they say in their uh, defaming ways, that I stand for truth no matter what you say. It's what does God's word say. Mm. The question is, is how does a person become so deceived in believing this church culture that we're in right now. How did we get here? And I want to give you a couple ways that I believe this is how we, we got here. Number one way is the voice of the Holy Spirit became silenced. I believe the church is in the state that we're in right now because the voice of the Holy Spirit became silenced within the body of Christ. Yes. See, it takes a commitment to stay in tune with the voice of God. Worldly desires and the old nature of sin will cause us to lose focus on God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. You and I must remain dialed into the frequency of the Father's broadcast, per se. There is a commitment it takes to continue to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because when we act in ways that grieve Him, that don't align with God, when we grieve Him, He's not speaking. When we don't follow and do the last thing that He instructed, He's not obligated to speak again after that. In, the, in Galatians 5, it tells us um, we are of the Spirit, so therefore walk in the Spirit. Yes, right. And the Spirit is not something goofy. It's not something that doesn't align with His Word. He's telling you, walk in the Spirit. Walk in the revelation knowledge of my Word. Okay? That's what He's telling us to do. You are of the Spirit. That is inside of you. You walk in the revelation knowledge of my Word. Right? When the Holy Spirit became taboo inside of the church, that's when he became silent. Yes. He is not going to become and be where he's not welcomed. Yes. Right. See, the Holy Spirit is our receiver of the Father's broadcast. That's what I said about right. a broadcast. Yes. God is always speaking. Yes. But the problem is we're not always listening. Yes. God doesn't have a speaking problem. We have a hearing problem. But the Holy Spirit is the one who receives the broadcast from the Father. If the Holy Spirit is ignored or shut off by our grieving, Mm -hmm. then so is the voice of God in our life. It is ignored and shut off. Yeah, I was listening to something, and it was a perfect example of how we can shut off the voice of the Holy Spirit. By us standing in worry, by us being anxious or us being our attitude becomes so um, about us and what we think is right 
it shuts off the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that's one thing I, you know, as leaders, we have to be cautious of. As we are leading different areas and different departments in the church, we need to be realizing and, and put that in us. What is bringing anxiety to my team? What can I do to d- redirect that so we do not lose the voice of the Holy Spirit as we are putting our hands to ministry? Mm, yeah. So important. That is so important. Not going through just this routine. Right. It's not about the task. Right. It's about the worship. Through the worship and truly about serving God and what right. we're doing is worship unto him. So right. good. I like that. That's yeah. really good. So number one reason I believe that this the, that we have fallen into this state, how we've allowed it to happen is it's is number one, the voice of the Holy Spirit has become silent. We have taken the place of offense and offending him and not welcoming him inside of our services anymore. Yeah. Second, the call of repentance has been removed. Mm. The more excuses that are accepted, the less conviction will be present. The more excuses that we accept, the less conviction will be accepted. Mm-hmm. When repentance leaves, sin remains. Yeah. Get that? When repentance leaves, sin remains. I believe the second reason why we are in the state that we're in is because the call for repentance has been removed from the pulpit in the church. Yes. We have taken and we've silenced the voice of the Holy Spirit, and then we say we're no longer going to call for repentance any longer. And where repentance is absent, sin will remain. Luke chapter 24, and we're going to look at a few chapters right here. Luke 24, and we'll start in verse number 46. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it is behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Number 47, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached. Stop. Right there, I highlighted that. He died, rose from the grave, Yes. right? He chose to do that for our salvation, for our restoration. Now, that repentance and remission of sins should be what? Preached. Preached or proclaimed. Yes. Is this in your Bible? Is this is this Bible? Yeah. Right? This is the book for me. Is it the book for you? Yes. So why have we allowed con men in the pulpit, I called them that, to tell us that repentance is taboo? Mm. That remission of sin is not of God. Mm. When right here, it's telling us as a demand to preach this, proclaim proclaim repentance and remission of sins in His name, in Jesus' name, amongst all nations, starting in Jerusalem. Yep. This is not done away with. This is something that has continued on. Repentance is not hate. It is actually God's love giving us a path to redemption. Yeah. Look over in Romans 8.4. Are you unmindful or actually ignorant? What a question. Mm-hmm. I had to ask my kids that before. <laughs> Are you unmindful or actually ignorant of the fact that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repent? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. God's what? His kindness. His kindness. His grace. His mercy. His love, His Son, yes. He gave so that we it would lead us to repentance. Yes. The Holy Spirit leads us to repentance, and He does it with kindness and love, yes. with the fruits of the Father's character and nature. Yes. Repentance doesn't mean we're telling you you're going to hell. Repentance is is living this life where the Holy Spirit is always available around you to draw people that to come yes. through the kindness and love of God, showing Him who He is. Yes. Repentance is not evil. It's not hatred. It's actually the road to redemption. Yes. So if we do away with repentance, if we do away with remission of sin, we've taken away the road to redemption. Yes. Because what we've done is created our own path. And there's only one way 
to the Father. There's the only true way. The only true way is Christ. That's right. And what we've done is we presented a false gospel. Mm -hmm. And it's very sad because we have a group that is now believing that they are on the way, what they think is the way, when it's not the way. Yeah. And we, those who accept that and say, it's okay because I got them to do this, it's not about that. It's about us knowing him and us having the relationship. And, and if we don't direct them towards that, we sold them something that they cannot receive. You know, we, it's, it's Timu for... <laughs> a Timu gospel? It's a Timu gospel. <laughs> so, it's the wish word. That's right. <laughs> Give me that wish Bible. So Romans 8, 4 again. Are you unmindful or actually ignorant of the fact that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? to change your mind and inner man to accept God's will. Mm -hmm. So that's what repentance is. Yeah. Right? To change my mind, my inner man, to accept the will of God in my life. Yeah, we want healing, but God heals us from the inside out. Hmm. True. You know? He does. He heals us from the inside out. In, in 1 John, it talks about your body prospers as your soul prospers. Yeah. Get a hold of that. My body prospers as my soul prospers. I want healing in my body. Oh. Inner man. Yeah. Inner man. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the first one we said was what? The voice of the Holy Spirit has yes. been silenced. Yeah. Number two, we said the call of repentance has been removed. Yes. Number three, mm. personal worship, prayer, and study have been vanished. Yeah. They have vanished. If you're dependent on Sundays, you're lacking. If the only time you worship, the only time you get in a prayer, the only time you get in the Word is what's presented here, you're starving. You are malnourished. Malnourished. Mm -hmm. A lot of times what this modern church age has done is it's tr tried to be, I, I, you know, I, I like that little shirt that says hope dealer. Yeah. But the church has become a, a, a place where they feel they can only get the hope there. Yeah. I can only get God's word there. I can only find freedom there. And church, it, church is so important to yes. gather to encourage us in our right. personal walk with God, not to be our walk with God. That's right. That's right? right. So it is so important to come together because you and I struggle. Yes. Right? Our flesh struggles. We encourage one another. You help me be better. Yes. You do. I can't do it without you because that's the way God created us. Your gift, my gift, joins together. We yes. join together to have to do great things, right? That's right. What, what God has gifted you with and, and what he's put you with, he hasn't done exactly with me, and we make each other better. We that's become right. more effective in this. Yes. Right? So we need each other. But the church, this, this gathering, is not your relationship with God. That's right. It can't be a substitute that's for right. it. It can't be a, a something that feeds you only. That's right. And we have created this environment and thought of church for people to become dependent upon it as the feeding. That's right. Right? And it's not supposed to make you dependent upon it as the feeding. You should, you should be dependent upon the fact is, I want to get together with brothers and sisters in Christ That's right. to help encourage and go, let's do this thing together. That's right. Right? Yes. Encouragement. It it should the, yes. the house of God should affirm what you are learning That's right. in the word of God. That's right. That's the affirmation That's that it, it should should yes. bring. Yes. Right? It's affirming the interchanging to look more like Christ. That's right. Not to affirm me staying looking like my old nature. Yes. Okay? Yes. So that's why this can't be it. L listen. When we become dependent on someone else's revelation, we will become vulnerable to their error. Mm. Yep. There's so many people walking in error because the only revelation they get is from that voice behind a pulpit. That's right. Now, I appreciate you have confidence in me. Yes. But the deal is, is you should have such a prayer life. You should be in the Word of God. I should be helping you grow in that. Yes. That what I'm saying confirms... The word. I should confirm it in the Bible, not what John yes. thinks or assumes. Yes. yes. Right? 
but it's actually biblical in what's being said, and I'm, I'm taking that, and that's being affirmed what I'm learning. Yes. We, we had somebody call and question something that was said the other day, right? That's right. We had, and, I, and I told this person, I said, I appreciate you calling. Yes. Because some people won't call. They'll just take their interpretation of what was said and run with it and come to find it, it was a total misunderstanding. Yeah. yeah. And I told this person, I appreciate you talking. Communication can settle a whole bunch of chaos. Right. Right? But that's what we should do. If there's something that you don't understand or checking or you're trying, you know, you, it goes against, then we need to talk about it. Right. Because you're not living off my revelation. That's right. All right? Yes. That's not what you're doing. We're working together to grow in God. That's right. Amen? Because if, God forbid, I ever get in error, I don't want to ever lead anybody in error. That's right. Because not only now I'm responsible for my error, I'm responsible for every person I led to error. That's right. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, man, I don't want to be in front of God with a bunch of error in my life. <laughs> All right? I want to be error-proof. <laughs> All right, so when we become dependent on someone else's revelation, we become vulnerable to their error. If you don't know the character and nature of God that is found in His Word and that is confirmed by His Spirit, then you are open to follow error. Yes. Hmm. We have to have personal worship. We have to have personalized prayer. We have to have our own personal study time with God. We have to have a development in our relationship outside the corporate encouragement and affirming where we're growing. Yes. Now, I want to encourage and tell you, everyone is at a different level in that. Yes. All right? Yes. And we shouldn't judge somebody's level on how where my level needs to be. No. It, but it needs to be, I need to pursue after him. I mean, you should don't give up. You'll have days where, oh, I didn't do it. Don't give up. Start fresh. Start anew. Yep. All right? Let's look at some Bible then. How about that? John 8, 31 <laughs> and 32. So Jesus said, who said? Jesus. Okay, I think he's important. Mm -hmm. So Jesus said to those Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word. Yes. Mm. Notice the word if. If, yes. If means that there is a decision that can be made, to or not to. Do I understand English right? I mean, I didn't get a good grade <laughs> in English, but I understand if you don't do something, there's consequences, or if you do something, there can be consequences. That's the choice called, is yours. That's called a precept. Precept. Okay, yes. thank you. Yes. Put your glasses on. Good. Remember me? Hey. All right. <laughs> so, if you abide in my word, mm -hmm. that means hold fast to my teachings and live according to them. Hold fast to my teachings and do what? Live, Live according importance. to them. Yeah. Then you are truly my disciples. Yes. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. He's talking about the believer. Yes. Not the preacher. He's talking about every person that calls themselves a follower of Christ needs to abide in his word. That means I remain, I live, I find my home in his word. Right. I abide there. Right. Not over here in the world and here. I'm not vacationing. Right. No, this is where I'm living. Right. I'm trusting in God. I'm living by his word. Right. My life is becoming more like his word. When I do that, truth comes, and that's where freedom comes. Yes. Yes. Right? Yeah. So here's why personal prayer, your personal time of worship and all is so important. Why? Because that's where you have to abide. You abide there. You hold fast to that. Then you live according to that. So a lot of times we want to stay there. I want to hold fast to your teachings, God, but I don't want to do anything. All right, let's move on. I got to move on. I got to yeah, move on. Yeah, we got to get into that. Got to move on. All right. <laughs> so James 4.8. Come close to God, and he'll come close to you. There's a choice again, right? Yes. I have to go close to God, and then what? He's going to come on close to me. Mm -hmm. It's at my desire. Mm -hmm. It's because of my will, right? Come close to God, and he'll come close to you. Recognize that you are sinners. Get, uh, get your soiled hands clean. Realize that you have been disloyal, wavering individuals with divided interest and purity of hearts, and purify your hearts, 
of your spiritual adultery. Mm. Man, I could stop right here and we could talk about spiritual adultery. And this is the born again believer that's living yes. a double life. Ooh, yeah. Mm. When we call ourselves a follower of Christ, a part of the bride, and yet we do things outside in our flesh, not here in the world, we're cheating on him. That's right. It's spiritual adultery. Yeah. That's quiet. Amen. Mm -hmm. right. My dad used to say, it's amen or oh me. Yep. And a lot of times that's an oh me statement yep. right there. Okay? So we have to realize that that can happen and yeah. continues to happen. How do I resolve it? It said get close to God. Yeah. Stop trying to run away from him. Stop trying to see how far away you can get from him before you can't hear him anymore. Amen. You can't see him anymore. Right? He said, draw close to me, I'll draw close to you. And when he draws close to you, guess what? Then you are not going to be led astray to this spiritual adultery. Amen. So good, but it happens in our one-on-one -on -one time with him. Yes. We have to teach you need a personal walk with God. Yes. Amen. Amen. We need the church, but we also, must, most importantly, need a one-on-one -on -one with the Father. Second Peter chapter 1, verse number 3. I know it's a lot of scripture, but I'm nowhere near done, and I got four three so i need to do this all right second peter uh one three his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life what yep i can't be godly no no his divine power That's has right. given me everything i need for a godly life yes listen to this through our knowledge of him who has called us by his glory and goodness yes so His divine power has given us everything we need for godly life through our knowledge. Yep. Through our what? Through our knowledge. So your ignorance or my ignorance will cost me where I'm not walking in the divine power that is needed for godliness. Yeah. So it's important that I get knowledge of God so I can be empowered to walk out this God life. That's right. I will not walk out the God life until I have the knowledge of who God is. Mm -hmm. Right? Verse 4, through these, he has given us his very great and precious promise. Through what? Knowledge of him. Mm -hmm. Right? Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promise so that through them you may participate in the promises or in the divine nature. Through them you may participate in the what? Divine nature. Mm -hmm. His divine power has given us everything for a godly life. Through the knowledge of Him who has called us by His own glory and goodness. Through those things He's given us great and precious promise so that through them we may participate in divine nature. There is a divine nature you can participate in. Mm. Right? But I'm not, I'm not participating in divine nature when I'm allowing my nature mm. to remain living. Amen. This is good. Having escaped the corruption in the world caused by the devil's desires, by the evil desires. Mm. Verse 5, for this very reason, make every effort. They make every effort. Make every effort. Who's, who's got to make effort? We do. And why are we saying that God's doing all the work? Ooh, yes. That's true. Is this Bible? Yep. I'm, I'm just saying, make every effort. They make every effort. Make every effort. To add to your faith. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. That's right. I just need faith. That's what pleases God. No, make every effort to do what? To add to it. I'm going to teach you something right here. I know I'm running over, but this is the point I wanted to make to you today. <laughs> There's adding to your faith. Yes. It's not just faith. I add to faith. Mm-hmm. Right? Now I have to make effort to add to the faith in God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness Mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. 
Mm. And we can read over this and never get what it's talking about. That's right. Until you stop and break it down. Each one of these seven things are the additions to faith. Or I call them the additives to faith. I put it this way. With my faith, I must add. Yeah. Are you ready? Goodness. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I looked up every one of these. Will you let me just tell you these seven real quick and end here, and then we'll continue next week. Can I tell you that, or you just want to stop now? Yeah. All right. These seven additives, what we have to add to our faith. Right? We have to come in faith to receive Christ as our Lord and Savior. Correct? Yes. Faith that He is the Son of God. That is our faith. We've made our confession. Now there are things... We add, not for our salvation, but these are things that we're going to add, and I'm going to show you why you add them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Remember, I can't be no, no more married than I am right now. That's right. So you can't be any more saved than you already are. But I can choose to add things to help this relationship grow that I'm married, but man, I can either have a hell of a marriage, huh? that means all hell breaking loose, or I can have a heaven of a marriage. Yes. Right? Based on the additives I have to the commitment I made. That's right. Understand? So we've made a commitment to Christ. Now here's the additives of faith. Number one, goodness. What does that mean in the original language? It means moral excellence. Yes. So don't teach and tell me that I don't have to have morals mm. in my life once I accept Christ because I'm forgiven. Mm. No, he's saying add this to your faith. What? Moral excellence. Yes. I should be on a journey to add moral excellence to my life. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Remember, I can't get any more saved. Right. But I can add to my salvation these attributes that he's telling me, to my faith. Yes. They add to my faith. Add to my faith. Number one, goodness. Moral excellence. That's what that means. Here's the next one, because you get into add this to this to this. I'm just taking each one of these as a separate additive to my faith, mm -hmm. right? Number two, he says, add knowledge to my faith. What does that mean? That means I have to add sound doctrine. Yep. That means I have to get in the Word of God. How do I add knowledge without getting in the Word of God finding? So yes. to my faith, I have to add moral excellence. I also have to add the Word of God and understanding in my life. Amen. I have to gain knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm adding to my faith, goodness and knowledge. Moral excellence, sound doctrine. Number three, self-control. Oh, my Lord. A lot of us need that. <laughs> John Brogdon included, okay? Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Holy Spirit power within to conquer. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit power within to conquer. Yes. To my faith, yep. I add Holy Spirit power to conquer. That's why you've got to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit in your faith. Not any more saved, right. but I've added His power so yes. I can conquer. That's right. They add into my faith. Add into my faith. Number one is goodness, moral excellence. Number two is knowledge, sound doctrine. Number three is self-control, which is Holy Spirit power within to conquer. Number five, perseverance. Huh? Number four. Number four, perseverance. Sorry. Number four, perseverance. That's why I have you. Okay. You're great. I'm, okay. You're amazing. What does perseverance mean? Strength to endure. Mm. I have to add endurance mm -hmm. to my faith. Yes. I can't give up. Can't give up. How do you add endurance? A little at a time. That's right. A little at a time. My sons are athletes. Mm -hmm. Right? Both of them, in their own respect, do different things, but they do them well. They are lifting more and, and doing more now than they could when they started. That's right. They've built endurance. Yes. Right? And the more you do it, the more you do it, the longer you can do it, the better you are at it, it's endurance. I yes. have to add this by practicing my faith. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So I add to my faith. By, by practicing it yes. in my endurance. Yes. Because when I build endurance, I can stand when the devil comes. I'm not giving in. That's right. I'm adding to my faith endurance. Yes. That I don't just have faith in the moment. I have faith until the promise is shown. Amen. 
Amen? I'm adding to my faith. Number five, godliness. Well, how can I add godliness to my faith? That's a great question. What does this mean, though? An inner response to the things of God with an outward expression of reverence. I honor you, God. I honor. I'm adding honor to my faith. I think we talked about that. Yes, some. yes. Number six, it says mutual affection. Mm. What do I need to add to my faith? Kindness and preference to brothers and sisters in Christ. Unselfish concern for others. Unselfish concern for others. I add it to my faith. Yep. I add it to my salvation. Yep. I add it to my walk. What? My preference and love and honor for the rest of the body. Mutual affection. Number seven, the last one, and I'm sure you're going, praise God. <laughs> it said love. Yep. I have to add love to my faith. And this is not just love that you are thinking about we see on television or you felt for somebody. It's the agape love. I have to add agape love to my faith. And I don't think it is a coincidence that is the last one that's mentioned because it will be the hardest thing to add to your faith. Because agape love or God's love is to love without condition. How did Jesus love? We have to add that love to our faith. Yeah. Right? Go back to the word. It says, make every effort. That means it takes an effort to do these things. So these additives are things that we have to take effort to add to it. They're just not something God pours out on you. Hmm. We add to these things. We build in these things. Right? They're the seven things. Why do I need them? Verse number eight. For if you possess these qualities in an increasing measure, if I possess these qualities, these additives of faith, in an increasing measure, what does that mean? We grow in them. Yes. So stop beating yourself if you're not where sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so is. That's right. Right? It's your effort. It's as we grow in them. Stop comparing yourself to everybody else. God loves you for you. Right. God loves you at where you're at. Now take effort in your salvation to make these additives. And he is proud when you just make effort. Yes. Effort is not showing up. Not doing the bare minimum. Effort is effort. Remember I gave the illustration last week about Ari doing the science fair project. And he did 30 minutes and he didn't win a prize. And he was mad. And he was mad. But he didn't put any effort in it. Right. He did the minimum requirement. But there's effort. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. The knowledge. Where did we hear that? His divine power has given us everything we need for the godly life through our knowledge. Who has called us, mm -hmm. right? In his own glory and goodness. Here, going back down there, what did we just say? There, these things in an increasing measure, these additives of faith, will help me be, not be ineffective and unproductive in the knowledge that I have of Christ. Yeah. It's going to help me hold on to the revelation that I'm getting of the knowledge of Christ and hold on to what I'm, I'm, I'm finding out and growing in Christ. Yeah. Amen? But whoever does not have them, this is what this is what we need to see right here. Not it's saying, give effort, right? Have them, because it's going to help you and benefit you to grow, right? It's it's going to help you be effective and productive. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, mm -hmm. forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Verse ten, I promise you, this last verse. Therefore, my brothers and sisters. Make every effort 
They make every effort. Make every effort. Who makes the effort? We do. Make every effort to confirm your calling and election. Mm -hmm. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Amen. I just don't see how I can just keep on and everybody just keep on. I, I keep stumbling and falling over. Where you haven't added to your faith. Yeah. You haven't put the effort to add to your faith because these things added to your faith will keep your feet solid and you're not going to stumble. You know, the word additives makes me think about what we have, the additives in our food, right? To have a longer shelf life, okay? If you want to have a longer faith life, bring those additives into your life and then you have a longer <laughs> faith life. <laughs> Amen. So when I commit my life to God by accepting Christ as my Savior, and He's my Lord. Anybody done that here? Amen. Raise your hand up high if you've done it here. Amen. When I commit my life to God by accepting Christ as my Savior and Lord, I am committing to a lifelong pursuit of increasing my intimacy and relationship with Him. That's what we have done. Amen. Right? And that's what we have to do. When I committed my life to her, mm -hmm. I committed myself to a lifelong, lifelong yep. pursuit mm -hmm. of increasing intimacy and right. knowledge and a relationship with her. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do. We have to maintain our relationship to remain. Yes. Amen. Amen? Amen. All right. Is that good? Pray that you were encouraged. I hope you saw something today that can kind of help you build in Amen. your faith. Amen. That's what I'm saying. You're not just saved from hell, y'all. Yes. Thank God I'm saved from the fire. Yeah. But I can add to my faith. Amen. And I can grow in intimacy. Yes. And it's going to help me not stumble. Yes. When somebody, listen to this, you think about it for a moment. Somebody that only believes in fire insurance. Hmm. That's all they believe in. Constantly will live a life of falling and failing. Yes. Check me on it. Yeah. If that's all they believe, they're going to live a life constantly returning to their sin. Falling, shortcoming. Why? They've never added something to their faith. Amen. They had the bare minimum mm -hmm. in their life. Yeah. I want more, do you? Yes. I want everything God has available Everything for me. that God has. Yes. I everything. desire. How about you? Amen. Stand to your feet with me. Thank you for connecting and watching online. I know it was a little long today, but I had to get that completed <laughs> because I, I wanted us. I still haven't got to the 20 ways. I told to me you weren't going to. I, 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 I haven't. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, we're going to go through an entire chapter of Ephesians, and I'm going to stop and give you 20 points in Ephesians of how to maintain your walk with God. Mm. Right? I just want to encourage you with this. So we may not do it in one time. I'm not going to try to... Nope. We, we'll get it over time because mm -hmm. I want you to do this. Because it is important to maintain. Yes. Amen. It's important to maintain. Maintain. Add and maintain. Add and maintain. Amen. Amen. If you didn't get the notes today... They'll be on you version. They're going to be on you version so you can get them. And uh, Miss Erica, thank you so much for your, your, your help in doing that. Let's give yes. her a hand. She yep. does so much. Yep. I just want to pray with you today. Father, thank you for the opportunity yes. we have today thank you, to break Lord. the bread of life. And I pray for every thank person you, here who heard that today that we'd be encouraged, God. If there's anyone here who doesn't know you, I declare that today they will. It's real simple. Make a confession with your mouth and faith in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God. And if that's you today, I'd love to lead you into that prayer. Just repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you now a sinner in need of a Savior. Jesus, I believe that you are the Savior, that you're the Son of God, that you died for me, you rose from the grave so that I can live. So now I ask you to come into my heart to be the Lord of my life. I choose to live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I pray over every person here. I call them the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. 
I declare, Father God, that they're coming up and coming out. I thank you, Father Lord, that they are living out loud. They are light into darkness, that nothing that the enemy tries to throw their way will distract them, will get them off track. But Father, I thank you that this week that we are going to add to our faith. We're going to increase in the walk. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.